Welcome to this week's Coffee and Conversation. We're going to talk about why couples counseling fails and what actually can increase the chance of it working. So there's three main reasons, and if you ask most counselors, therapists, they'll tell you the number one reason is you've waited too long. And really often that person has been done for a long time. Think about it, man. We know 18 to 24 months before they say, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I want a separation. If you detect things are wrong, you need to start addressing them soon as possible. Also, the person who's done, often they're just going to couples counseling to check the box at that point. Uh, I ran into this in my marriage all those years ago. Knew none of this stuff. She had no intention of working on the relationship. She was already in an emotional affair with who would become her future husband. And so it was a matter of checking the box. And I remember my pastor telling me after our first session, after he'd met with her, this is going to be tough, which was code for, dude, your marriage is done. (laughs) Okay. Again, I'm not upset over it. It's the reality of it. I contributed more than half to the problem that led to that. Okay. Number two reason. Two. Yeah, we'll get the fingers right. Lack of personal accountability, okay? And men often see this, it looks like the you're a 100% at fault. Or you get blamed when she has an affair, okay? Again, and the challenge with this is often the person who's the problem, once, if you have a good counselor, keep in mind, that, that in and of itself is tough, but you have a good one who starts to hold them accountable and pointing out their problems, This is when that partner quits. I don't like this counselor anymore. Uh, I talk to a lot of men who have wives that are the problems, as opposed to, I don't end up working with men who are the problem typically, but you know, they have their own contributions. But when the wife is the problem and she's got a lot of issues and she's narcissistic and she's blaming, as soon as the counselor starts calling them out, boom, they're done. I quit with that counselor, they'll get another one, same thing. Uh, very common. And this works both ways with men and women. doesn't matter who uh, is the at-fault party. They're the ones that often quit. And then the final, the third reason, is one person doesn't even want to be there in couples counseling. Okay? Very often, it is the problem person in the relationship. Okay? They don't want to be there. They're blaming you. They don't want accountability. And they're done. So it's kind of, if you don't want to be there, you're not going to have good results. And this is something to keep in mind, folks. If the knee-jerk reaction is to go to marriage counseling when there's a huge relationship crisis, when you factor in that 80% of counselors suck, okay, so the Gottman certified ones are usually pretty good. They're part of the 20% that are worth their weight in gold. Um, Then... If you have people who both want to be there, you have much better chance for success. And I said I'd give you the one key to making it more successful. It's both of you working on yourself first and leveling up and then going to couples counseling because you're now no longer just blaming the other person. You're aware of your own issues. You've been leveling up and working on improving yourself for yourself. Then you go to couples counseling highly effective. Maybe you have a communication issue. Maybe there's some other issues, but you have two people who are working on themselves, improving, and wanting to work towards a version 2.0 relationship. That really increases the odds of success. All right. Have a great week. And remember, you're worth putting in the work for. All right. Have a great one. We'll see you next time.